cannot even identify what you call cannabis or any drug. Beyond taking water. Tonight, Senate to engage NDLA over drug-related allegations. Secure Abuja from One Chance Activities, House of Representatives urges security operatives. Hernos crime has sent shockwaves through our community. First Lady declares National Cybercrime Summit open six collaborative efforts with parents to stem the menace among youth. It is therefore crucial that we address this challenge head on and explore not only the harmful consequences of cyber crimes, but also the sustainable alternatives that can redirect our youth towards productive and positive endeavors. A civil servant to smile as federal government begins full implementation of minimum wage this October. Thanks for joining us on the Network News tonight. I am Olajide Bello. Hingino John Adams is in our Lagos studio and will be bringing us some news from that axis. Meanwhile, Benny Adams is on the business news segment. And Benny, I heard that uh, the World Bank annual meetings commenced in Washington, D.C. Yes, surely we have more than 1,000 delegates already in D.C. And the mission is to redirect the cost of economic growth globally. And I tell you, Nigeria is a beneficiary. All right, uh, many thanks, uh, Benny. Abdullah Ajia will be bringing us uh, tidbits from the world of sports. Uh, Abdullah, what should we be expecting from the Flamingos match uh, against the host country this night? Of course, uh, Ola Jide, we're happy that uh, the girls are doing us proud. At least eight goals, uh, six points, and we've already qualified for the quarterfinals. So I think the last game uh, in the Group A will be uh, like a walkover if we should be upbeat on the game. All right, uh, many thanks, uh, Abdullahi. Remember, you can follow this news broadcast live on all our social media platforms. And let's start from the State House, where Jigawa State Governor Umar Namadi has officially briefed President Bola Tinubu on the fuel tanker disaster which recently claimed over 100 human lives in the state. The governor at the State House this Tuesday also appreciated the president for the federal government's response and support conveyed by a delegation to the state led by the secretary to the government of the Federation, George Akume. After meeting with the president, Governor Namadi briefed State House correspondents on the situation update. So today we have about 181 people that died, and we have about 80 people in the hospital, and about 210 families are affected by this disaster. The Gaza government has taken the medical bill of all the affected people. And uh, we have done a lot of intervention to the families to ensure that this, uh, they continue their livelihood. And also, the, Mr. President has promised to intervene and assist the victim. Following the incident, the President directed the authority of the Federal Road Safety Corps to investigate and profile a lasting solution to such occurrence, while the state government has also set up a committee with a similar mission. And now to the Red Chamber, the Senate has set up an other committee to engage the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and DLA over the drug-related allegations it's reportedly made against the Deputy Majority Leader of the Senate, Senator Oyelola Ashiru. Senator Ashiru had, at the commencement of Plenary Tuesday, come under a matter of a privilege pointing to the information that emanated from the NDLA. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports. The decision of the Senate to engage the NDLEA on the matter was based on the information that the allegation may be connected to remarks of Senator Ashiru during debates on the floor of the Senate on the 15th of October 2024. I cannot even identify what you call cannabis or any drug. Beyond taking water, I don't take alcohol. I am of opinion that for the protection of myself as a member of this alone chamber for the protection of the Senate and other senators. We must do something about this. I understand the person that went on television was even uh, alluding to the fact that you made contributions 
on the floor and trying to quote what you said on the floor. The constitution and the, and the laws, the laws of the land, anything you say here is privileged. It has is it covered with immunity. The ad hoc committee mandated to conduct the investigation and make recommendations was given four weeks to report back. Senate passed for second reading two bills, including bills to establish National Food Reserve Agency, sponsored by Senator Saliu Mustafa. Establishing an agency for the purpose of food reserve is essential to enhance food and nutritional security. The agency will be charged with the responsibility of buying up surplus with a view to storing it during the period of a harvest. In another development, Senate Committee on Power has engaged management of the National Power Training Institute as it seeks improvements in the sector. All we require is the equipment, uh, which we don't manufacture. I'd also like to learn from the management the milestones that you have so far achieved in the area of training our people especially in the new areas of solar installations and meter installations. If young Nigerians are trained in the area of solar, they can be on their own, they can install in solar. We have testimonies that quite those who are trained, they are installing solar all over the place. The institute provides training for power sector personnel in Nigeria and some countries in Africa from the National Assembly, Rami Ali, NCA News. The United Kingdom Home Office International Operations has said its collaboration with Nigeria in the fight against substance abuse and illicit drug trafficking is yielding positive results. Head of UK Home Office International Operations Victoria Pollan said that this when she led her colleague on a cut visit to the Chairman Chief Executive Officer of NDLEA Brigadier General Mohamed Buba Marwa to a renewed memorandum of understanding between HOIO and NDLA in Abuja. The duo said the issue of drug trafficking is a huge global issue that requires joint effort to hence the willingness of the teams to work with the NDLA in order to do things differently, describing the Home Office as a major partner. Marwa expressed appreciation to the UK government for supporting Nigeria's efforts to curb the scourge of illicit drug trafficking, especially in the building and donation of Marine Headquarters facility to the agency last week on a similar operational facility at the MMIA command in Ikeja, Lagos, last year. And a shot of hope in the battle against illicit drugs in Nigeria. Let's bring in Salwa Ibrahim Khalil to tell us a bit more on what the public need to know about the efforts of uh, NDLA, which is poised to save millions from the societal uh, dreaded substance. Salwa, and you also have a touch of blue. We have something in common, right? Yeah, of course, Ola Jide, thank you. Now, Nigeria used to be misconceived, you know, as the hub for a uh, gateway, rather, for illicit drug pushing and use, but today the NDLEA is considered as a regional leader among national drug law enforcement agencies in the African continent. Now, this is evidence in, uh, rather, I would like to mention some of these drugs we see on daily basis uh, uh, include cannabis, metamphetamine, cocaine, loud cannabis, tramadol, among others. And these are sometimes in large quantity. And some of uh, uh, this arrest, uh, this is evidence, of course, in the number of interception and arrest among others. And uh, so far, let's see the number of arrests made since 2021. Now, 52,000 arrests were made nice, with 9,000 conviction. Three life sentences were handed over in 2024. Now, 33,000 treatment and rehabilitation has been carried out so far on those that, you know, use these substances. And about 7,000 awareness and sensitization campaign have been carried out, you know, across the country in worship places, marketplaces, and schools. Now, despite the increased number of these arrests, one might wonder why some people still embark on the dangerous journey. Now, some are being coerced with money or fake promise, if you like, of better life, many of who sometimes end up 
in the next now let's go to collaborations now over the years we've seen the uh, NDLA have re received a lot of backing from uh, international you know support from international organizations and government like uh, UK France uh, United States of America German government among others international and local organization with high-tech forensic equipment and uh, you know even infrastructures some of which inc include building and donation of uh, marine headquarters facilities in Lagos as well as training of personnel for intelligence gathering on counter narcotic operations now the NDLEA says it has never been more ready and committed to its mandate vowing to rid the country of illicit substances regardless of who is involved Lajide. all right uh, many thanks uh, salwa you actually caught my attention there with uh, the number of rehabilitated persons. Definitely, NDLA is doing uh, a good job as towards that regards. Mm. And already with me in the studio to throw more light on the successes of an the anti narcotics agency is the Director of Media and Advocacy, NDLA Femi Baba Femi. You're welcome to the Network News. Thank you. It's my pleasure being here. Okay, uh, despite the increased number of arrests made over the few years, why is it that the menace has not been abated? Well, this is actually, um, we, we definitely cannot pretend that this is, um, a, I mean, what kind of a problem that um, will fizzle out overnight? No, it's, um, it's something that has been there over the years, for decades. And, um, but then the good thing is, um, there are concerted effort in recent years to actually um, solve, to actually resolve these issues. Because when you go back to the 2018 um, drug use survey report published in 2018, that survey was conducted by the country's um, National Bureau of Statistics with the support of um, United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, UNODC, and that, for the first time, gave us evidence-based picture, green picture of what the drug situation in Nigeria looks like. With um, <clears throat> 14.3 million Nigerians are abusing illicit substances. That's more than the population of a number of African countries, including some European countries. And um, that also gives us um, um, a 14.4% prevalence average as against, which is almost three times the global prevalence average of 5.6. So that, um, that shows us indeed that, a, that that's a deep-rooted problem and then um, that needs to be uh, tackled headlong. Um, we're glad that indeed um, we've been doing all of that with the support of the government of Nigeria, which I can tell you um, uh, we probably wouldn't have been able to do anything without the, with the support of the government of Nigeria. And again, in addition to that, with the support of um, our local stakeholders, partners, and especially our international partners. And that's why um, I was glad that um, Salwa was able to capture um, some of these um, figures, statistics of what the agency has been doing in the last three years with more than 52,000 arrests. That's huge. That is yeah. addressing the area of drug supply reduction with more than um, 8.6 million kilograms of assorted illicit drugs seized within that space. That's again probably one of the highest anywhere in the world that within a period of three years such um, uh, humongous um, or magnitude of illicit drugs will be taken out of circulation. Just imagine a fraction of that allowed into our communities, into our cities is what um, would have been the impact. Again, when it comes to the area of um, demand reduction, that is where we try to educate the populace. And I, I'm glad again what um, the NTA network is doing this moment. It's also part of this process to raise awareness, to educate the people, to bring this to the front um, from Bona. And um, that again, we have been doing, um, like Sawa also said, we've had more than 7,000 of such advocacy activities in schools, workplaces, uh, worship centers, communities, motor parks, um, and um, and um, uh, communities all across the country. That's a that's something we do every day across the country, um, weekly. And um, so that's something on the one hand. Then on the other hand of it is providing support to those um, who who um, have struggled with substance abuse, especially uh, those um, that don't really have access or they don't know how to go about it. And um, in the last three years, I can also tell you also that we had more than 33,000 persons um, who had gone through yeah, our facilities across the country. That's also huge, and we we'll try to ensure that we um, not only get them support, we also 
follow up to ensure that they are well integrated back into their families and communities. Okay, very quickly now, uh, despite uh, the huge arrest made over the years, uh, there are still some instances uh, that you see operatives making arrests on uh, the roads, ignoring more conspicuous places such as markets and uh, abattoirs where the suspect take the hard drugs brazenly in broad daylight. Why does uh, this happen? Well, quite a lot of factors that um, if we have to uh, discuss um, the predisposing factors um, or causative factors, quite a lot of factors are responsible from, for these things, starting from the home. I mean, quite um, a lot of homes these days you find um, even the parents themselves um, um, indulge in substance abuse. And so the young ones, their kids see these things and they think that's um, a normal thing. So they copy that from the homes, uh, sometimes could be as a result of of um, um, problems within the family in situations where um, parents are not together, whether the father is missing, or, I mean, is not present at home, is not uh, with the family or the mother, all of these things contribute largely <coughs> to um, the accusative factors that um, lead to, um, that encourage or lead these young people to the streets to engage in um, substance abuse. Again, beyond that, again, you also have the issue of um, peer pressure from their friends when they leave the home, um, who they go, I mean, who they mix with, who they, who they uh, follow out there, the kind of friends they uh, mix with, all of these also um, are causative factors. Oh, oh, all right. Uh, many thanks. Uh the Director of Media Advocacy, NDLE, Femi Baba Femi for your input. I know you have loads and loads of information for us, but uh, don't worry, we'll sure do call you up uh, another time. Many thanks for I your input. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're watching the Network News. More reports when we return. Thanks for being there. Now to the Green Chambers. The House of Representatives has mandated its committees on FCT police as well as national security and intelligence to conduct a comprehensive investigation into the spate of kidnapping and armed robbery within the nation's capital and report to the House within three weeks. The House also denounced the resurgence of one chance taxi operations in Abuja by unregistered and fraudulent operators urging the security agencies to arrest the menace. National Assembly correspondent Mitairi Ipen reports. We're debating this issue. In a motion of urgent public importance, Representative Ismail Dabu lamented the death of his legislative aide, Ms. Nima Suleiman, who was brutally murdered on her way home by one chance taxi operators around Banex Junction in Wuse district of Abuja last Thursday. Despite paying ransom in full, her life was tragically cut short. Her body was found between the hours of 9 to 10 p.m at Maitama Minister's Hill Bridge in Abuja, disturbed that this heinous crime has sent shockwaves through our community, confirming the escalating insecurity in the FCT. While observing a minute silence for the deceased, the House called on security agencies to clamp down on unregistered and fraudulent taxi operators in order to arrest the menace. This motion is referred to the committees on FCT, police, national security and intelligence for further legislative action. The House also condemned the spate of brutal killings in Anambra State. Over 10 youths were dastardly murdered in Igbo community on the 20th day of October, during the celebrations of the New Year Festival, sent a delegation to Anambra State to hold discussions with the state government and relevant stakeholders on the escalating insecurity in the state. Several bills scaled second reading. The bill for an act to alter the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended to create new Oyo State with Oyo Town as the capital city from Oyo State effect consequential change of the name of the remaining part of your state to Ibadan State with Ibadan City as the capital city. To establish institute of leadership, entrepreneurship, and corporate governance and for related matters. The House received and adopted the report and recommendations of its ad hoc committee on discrimination against the House of Representatives in the National Honours Award. There's a need to review the National Honours Act Cap N43, laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. We should place apart all other principal officers previously, not only presiding officers, because majority leader of the House, or leader of the House, 
and the Senate are normally considered for the same award. From the National Assembly, Mitaire Ikwen, NTA News. Now talking cyber security, no economy can thrive if its most active and talented youth are sold to crime. Therefore, it is imperative that parents and other stakeholders take proactive steps aimed at renewing and redirecting the minds of youth towards productive and honest living. Nigeria's first lady, Oluremi Tinubu Sitevis, while declaring open the 2024 National Cyber Crime Summit organized by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in Abuja. State House correspondent Adeni Taiwo reports. Bringing together relevant stakeholders, the National Cybercrime Summit 2024 is a rallying cry by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission against a social and economic menace that threatens the integrity, security, and productive capacity of the nation. Their theme, alternative to cybercrime, optimizing cyber skills for national development, intends to open a new chapter and the fight against cybercrime by first acknowledging its challenges while highlighting opportunities for honest livelihood in tech ecosystem. Their commission is putting a strong foot forward with the establishment of a rapid response desk. And while unveiling the desk, Nigeria's first lady, Olura Mitunbu, says everything must be done to ensure that the creative talents of Nigerian youths are not excluded from active involvement in national development. We are confronted with the pressing reality. The digital age, while offering unprecedented opportunities, has always exposed us to new vulnerabilities. It is therefore crucial that we address this challenge head on and explore not only the harmful consequences of cyber crimes, but also the sustainable alternatives that can redirect our youth towards productive and positive endeavors. To so our youth, the choices you make today will define your future and the future of Nigeria. I urge you to choose honesty, integrity and hard work. The federal government under President Bola Tinubu, the Renewed Hope Initiative under our leadership and the EFCC are all working to offer multifaceted solutions to the challenge, but more has to be done by other critical stakeholders. Parents play a pivotal role in raising and guiding their children and what's to be God-fearing inculcate in them good values, morals, and sense of patriotism. Bond of trust and understanding should be created between parents and their children, and to allow for open communication, whereby their fears and insecurities could be addressed. With about 250 billion naira lost yearly to cybercrime, the Commission requires the support of all to protect the nation's digital space and image. We have reached a stage in our nation that necessity should compel a change of narrative from criminality to productivity, from idleness to usefulness, and cybercrime to cyber wealth. By empowering the youth, this youth to build our economy and salvage our image as a nation, the FCC is creating a momentum for the development of our country. The Christian Association of Nigeria continues to urge religious leaders to give strong moral leadership in combating this crime. We need to integrate our cultural legacy and the impact it may have on the perception of crime. What we need is aggressive engagement so that a lot of people that have done this on the platter of they don't know, they know we readjust and adjust. Apart from reducing response time, to reported cases from all the states of the Federation, the new Cybercrime Front Desk, ECR2, is also positioned to serve as the hub for research and development. From the banquet hall of the presidential villa, Adeni Itaiwo, NTA News. An address set to achieve additional 20% digital literacy to the current 50 in the next three years to help curb the menace of cyber crimes. This was disclosed at the second national summit on cyber crimes organized by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The report. As technology keeps evolving, so does the scourge of cyber crime, where global financial loss through internet fraud is expected to hit $10.5 trillion by 2025. 
Nigeria is also experiencing its share of the challenge with more than $500 million said to be lost to cybercrime annually. This crime, experts say, is being carried out by mostly youth who form most part of the 50% digital literate population of the country. The, the development and advancement of the cyberspace is a major problem for us. Uh, you are trying to catch up. Uh, in those days, if you need to collect money from the bank, you go there with your teller and all of that, you catch. These days, at the press of a button, you can move money from one account to the other. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and partners organized the summit to provide solutions to cybercrime, which is not only affecting the economy, but tarnishing the image of the country as well. We need to build our proficiency on building professional cyber security experts that will defend our cyber or digital public infrastructure. Information about our bank accounts, information about our national identity, information about our passwords, maybe to our email addresses, you know, um, we should be careful with the people that we disclose those information to. This is a very good opportunity and I believe this is the way forward so that we can redeem the image of Nigeria in the Committee of Nations. The summit is equally an avenue tailored towards exposing youth with technological skills and opportunities for legitimate wealth creation. 70% of piracy and kidnapping in 2023 occurred in the Gulf of Guinea, while the bulk of illicit small and light weapons smuggled to Nigeria are through the maritime route. Defence correspondent Ismail Musa reports that this was highlighted at a workshop on climate change organised by the National Centre for Control of Small and Light Weapons. Climate change attributed to man's continuous abuse of the ecosystem is deflating socioeconomic resources through desertification, flood and other natural disasters. This has contributed to heightened societal strain resulting to criminal activities with the maritime domain conveying the bulk of the illicit small and light weapons used by the criminals. In June 2024, a 40-feet container with 844 rifles and more than 112,000 rounds of ammunition were intercepted at the Onisi port in Portacot. The lucrative nature of the Gulf of Guinea in terms of natural resources attracts criminal elements. These illicit elements constitute to perpetrate nefarious activities in the Gulf of Guinea conducting various devastating crimes, notably drug trafficking. In this category lies the smuggling of small arms and light weapons by international crime syndicates. This workshop on climate change and arms proliferation in Nigeria is focused on navigating new security threats in the Gulf of Guinea. We must reflect on how the changing climate exacerbates insecurity, weakens governance, and allows the illegal arms trade to thrive. We need to explore how we can respond to these emerging threats more effectively by fostering stronger national and regional frameworks for arms control. The National Center for the Control of Small and Light Weapons is seeking local and international collaboration to combat the illicit arms proliferation, amplifying crime, and truncating socioeconomic activities. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. And away from security matters, the great focus on improving teaching standards and learning outcomes, MTN Foundation is making strides in bridging the education gap through science-based initiatives in public secondary schools nationwide. Ikano State Government Girls College, Dala, is one of the beneficiaries of the third phase of the Science and Technology Laboratory Initiative. Mohammed Ibrahim reports the school's physics, biology, chemistry and agricultural science laboratories have undergone complete renovation. Over the years, MTN Foundation has supported government efforts in youth development, particularly in health and education. One of its key initiatives, the Science and Laboratory Project, aims to boost science and technology education by upgrading and modernizing laboratories in selected public schools. Government Girls College Dala in Kanu State is the latest beneficiary of the MTN Foundation's gesture, with four of the school laboratories fully remodeled featuring state-of-the-art equipment, a solar-powered borehole, and essential supplies. We believe that you know this will revolutionize learning in uh, Kano State and of course will feel the ripple effect in Nigeria as a whole. We hope that uh, the intervention would impact a great deal 
on the quality of teaching and learning, give the students not just a theoretical perspective, but also hands-on practical experience. At the inauguration, Kano said Commissioner for Education and a representative of the Emir of Kano praised MTN Foundation for its efforts calling for further investment in education across the state and the nation. We sincerely appreciate this. We thank them for this and we are going to surely put this to proper use. The gesture is very commendable indeed, especially in regard to the sector they have uh, uh, attended to, which is education. And education, particularly women education, as we all know, if you educate a woman, you educate a nation. MTN Foundation also provided training for laboratory staff to ensure students receive proper guidance in using the new facilities. And from Kano, let's head straight to Lagos, where Hingino is standing by. Good evening, Hingino. Take it up from here. Thank you, Olajide. Harnessing the potential inherent in cross-border trade for economic growth is the focus of a six-week workshop in which participants are now armed with knowledge on ways of improving their businesses. The seminar which held in Lagos was premised on the notion that driving small and medium-scale enterprises could be the needed antidote to the present economic realities in the country. Larry Bede reports. In this all are 200 small-scale cross-border traders in the southwest zone of the country rounding off their workshop, which started on the 10th of September 2024. Using 13 modules on core idea subjects on cross-border trade as a course curriculum. And what they have learned on how to escape those challenges in terms of processes, in terms of the policies of government, in terms of the the procedures that they need to do, in terms of documentations, in terms of certifications that they would need to have. We equip them with all of this. Some of these traders, they lack information about what they are supposed to trade in, or what the type of goods they are supposed to export or import. TFWA set out to build capacity of at least 3,000 traders across various trade-related topics. While we have achieved this, at the urging of our project partners, we have increased our target and are training an additional 800 traders in Nigeria. It also provides a platform for participants to share experiences, exchange views and challenges that we aid strategic repositioning and improved exploits in businesses. Cross-border transactions have a lot of bottlenecks. A lot of it is structural, a lot of it is um, behavioral, cultural. and Every party is involved. The agencies need to get the act together. We, the traders, need, like they've been highlighting here, engage confidently. The goal of the training is for participants who have been harmed with the necessary information to go back to their various associations and cascade what they've learned to their colleagues. In Lagos, Lanry, Bilayi, and the News. Friends. Peer pressure and other vices are some of the factors responsible for increase in drug abuse among the youth. Experts, however, say good family values and morals can change the narrative. Bola Jaikin completes the report. According to data from the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, the prevalence rate of drug abuse is on the increase among youths with figure put at 20 to 40 percent. This is an alarming statistics which is propelling stakeholders to take urgent action so as to save the nation's future leaders from destruction. According to them, strengthening family support system will not only prevent the use of illicit drugs and substances, it will also serve as an avenue to lay a foundation for real family values. The family is the smallest unit of socialization. And if things are going on well with the family, it goes a long way in reducing the risk of substance use among family members. Every learning that takes place with any child starts from the family. It's from the family that he learns values, from the family that he learns attitudes and norms. And that is what plays out in the larger society. With various challenges which has exposed most youths to illicit drugs markets, experts are of the opinion that creating a stable and nurturing environment 
will not only help the victim, it will also mitigate against relapse. When you delay and the problem continue, there might be a problem in the recovery. And the recovery may be slow or the outcome may be poor. They suggested vigilance and effective monitoring while looking out for behavioral changes in their children, such as mood swings, as means of early detection. In Lagos, Bolaji Akim, NTA News. Those are the stories from Lagos. Network News will return after this break with Benny Adams, who is standing by with some business reports. It's time to talk a business. Now, thousands of delegates, ministers, central bank governors, and heads of state have converged on Washington to find ways of tackling economic issues facing their countries. Key among them are issues of growth, inflation, climate, and artificial intelligence, all on the table. And today, the IMF says the global inflation wave is in retreat as a combination of resolute monetary policy actions, easing supply chain constraints, and moderating food and energy crisis is guiding the global community back in the direction of price stability. But once that, as inflation is falling, higher price level will still persist. Families are hurting, people are angry. Advanced economies saw inflation rates at once in a generation highs, and that memory is not going to be erased uh, rapidly. So did many emerging uh, market economies. But look at how bad the situation was for low-income countries. At the country level and at the level of individuals, inflation always hits the poor the hardest. Now our prices have bounced back uh, somewhat after selling off steeply last week. Uh, traders increasingly view a supply disruption in Middle East due to Israel-Iran tensions as unlikely. And uh, this is why, looking at the energy market, U.S. crude oil prices rise nearly 1% extended gains to above uh, 7 to one dollar per barrel. Let's take a look at uh, the Brent crude oil. I see the WTI for now. That is the West Texas Intermediate. The West Texas Intermediate November contract ended today's transaction around $71.22 per barrel, up 66 cents a year to date. And uh, also a look at the Brent December contract. We can see a $74.85 per barrel, up 56 cents a year to date. The global benchmark has also declined nearly 3%. This shows that the weak demand in China has also weighed on prices. Recently, Beijing cut its benchmark lending rates on Monday, leading or well, as lending some support to the features. And now uh, moving on. Domestic equities are talking about a Nigerian equities market now. Domestic equities have sustained previous gains with the all share index up 0.20% as investors gain 119.96 billion naira. You can see the numbers equity capitalization raised somewhat to 59.9 trillion naira, valued at 24. 8 billion. Looking at the volume of stocks, we have 591 traded in 6,987 deals, bringing us, or like the all share index now, to 98,892. I'm looking at Talking about the top trades at this particular moment, the numbers show notable buying interest in banking stocks from UBA, 44.9 million, then Jopo Gold, 108.8 million. And on the first spot, we have Champion with 255.2 million. Well, that is it on business at this time, Olajide. You can take it from here. All right, uh, many thanks, Benny. Let me take you to the labor business now. There are indications that federal civil servants will receive their minimum wage salaries in full by the end of October. The president of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Joe Wajero, disclosed this in an exclusive interview with our correspondent, Ladi Bala. The 
meeting we had was a meeting that we, where, where we all agreed that if they must pay by the end of this month, to run. What about the areas? The areas, same. You know, however, if they so decide to negotiate with their various parastatals and agencies, you know, to now say we are going to pay the arrears on so so date, they have they have liberty to do it. On the payment of arrears of the minimum wage, the NLC president has this to say. Regarding state-level implementation, Argero directed state branches of the NLC to engage the state government. He commended state governors who have commenced payment of the minimum wage. This development follows the federal government's assurance to sustain payment of the minimum wage award to workers. Now to Queen Power, the transmission company of Nigeria to see and says its 330 kV Guajia operable circuit transmission lines 1 and 2 tripped due to a fault causing power outage which affected the north, east, northwest and parts of the north central zones. To see it in a statement notes that at approximately 4.53 a.m. the Uwaji Makadi 330 kV line 2 tripped and 243 megawatts on the line had to be transferred to line 1 on the same route which also tripped resulting to loss of 468 megawatts of electricity. TCN says it has restored supply to the 132 kV transmission line from New Haven to Upper in Benway State, but the 330 line remains out of service, impacting power supply in the northern region of the country. TCN assures that it is making efforts to trace the cause of the outage to enable its engineers effect repairs and restore bulk power supply to the north. TCN apologizes to the government and electricity consumers in all the affected states of the Federation. A call marshal, Federal Road Safety Corps, Sheikh Mohammed, says Africa needs a walkable transport infrastructure that is connected to provide a dynamic, sustainable, and safe mobility of persons and service. Service are the first African regional. Congress on Transportation and Logistics for Building Sustainable Logistics Chain for Africa's Structural Transformation. Oye Yemi Ajayi has details. The event is expected to unite and enhance collaboration between African countries and foster better regional integration, especially in the area of road transport safety. While highlighting that one of the major logistical challenges of the road transportation system in Africa is road safety due to the recurring road crashes on the roads. The commercial said FRC had initiated and developed measures to ensure the safety of persons, goods and services lying the highways, citing that these programs were anchored on two policy thrusts, public awareness components of the road safety and the enforcement of traffic laws and regulations. In recognition of critical roles played by the Federal Road Safety Corps in West African subregion in road safety management, the Corps Marshal was honored as the leader of the Niger delegation with an award by the President of the African Union of Transport and Logistics Organization, Mustafa Chon, during the ceremony. Oyeyemi Ajayi, NTA News. Another break back and the news continues in a moment. Many thanks for being there. And I know Abdullah is itching to let the cart off of the bag with uh, details from the world of sports. Abdullah. Thank you, Olajide. Thank you for joining us on this segment. Let's begin with wrestling. The Comptroller General of Customs, Bashir Adiwali Adeni, has promised to support the Nigerian Wrestling Federation on ensuring the Federation takes the wrestling game to the grassroots including secondary and tertiary institutions across the country to ensure the Federation discovers and nurtures talents that will claim podium finishes in international competitions. For Nigeria, Adini, who is a board member of the NWF, made this known while declaring open the maiden CJC military and paramilitary national wrestling championship Tuesday at the Indoor Sports Hall, package B of the Moshuda Biola National Stadium, Abuja. 
Our intention is to make sure that we sustain this. And the best way to sustain it would be for us to go all the way down the grassroots and identify talents in all of these places, nurture them, refine them so that they can be up to all standards as, as, uh, you know, as we give them exposure through competition. Talking football now, head coach of the Nigerian Flamingos, Bankololo Kere, says the team is in high spirit ahead of their final Group A game against host Dominican Republic in the ongoing 2024 FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup later tonight. According to the coach, the girls hope to seal the game with 100% win record after winning their last two games, scoring eight goals and conceding one to book a place in the quarterfinals. Well, that's the much we'll have for you on the sports back to Olajide. Many thanks, Abdullahi, and we're actually keeping our fingers crossed for our girls' victory later today. And that's the network news. Many thanks for being a part of it. I am Olajide Bello.